Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today we keep working on linear programming. In the last class, uh, we had a discussion about uh, how to um, formalize, make a mathematical formulas for a, for a linear programming problem. Uh, what could be our objective functions and uh, based on the limitations or constraints that we have, how we can get a minimum or maximum of an objective function. But uh, my comment on it, uh, you, so we had the question, what if we have more than two decision variables? Again, what decision variable refers to, if you might remember, we had a uh, example of hash brown and sandwiches so each uh, it was a guy who was who had to decide how many sandwiches and how many hash browns he had to sell and in that problem uh, sandwich and hash brown were decision variable because based on the quantity and value the end of uh, getting uh, in our object, we end up getting an uh, answer in our objective function. But let's say we have more than two variables, three variables, four variables. What can we do? Uh, we, definitely more than two or three variables is very hard to solve a linear programming problem graphically. So we might, we might need to, another way to solve such a problems. So it was what we reviewed in the last class, but uh, keep in mind uh, the next number is coming. I uh, posted either tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, we need to submit by next week, April 8th. Also, we had today is the last day of submitting uh, uh, for uh, submitting your project for MSBA competition. And if you do presentation in that competition, you don't have to do for your final project, but also keep in mind almost at the end of this month, you have a due for your final project. If you look at the Qualtrics, it asks you something about the results and other parts of that. So keep in mind if your results are not done, that's fine. Even you can just, in the summary, you can just uh, provide uh, some of uh, results that you have, not all of them, or maybe you can say what you are going to see. You don't have to, if you, if you have the numerical outcomes or result, that's totally fine. Otherwise, just mention about that. So just say what you are going to see. For example, let's say you want to predict hotel reviews. You don't, if you have the uh, accuracy of your model or AUC, that's fine, put it there, but you can say in this paper, you are going uh, to predict the hotel reviews, uh, the, the outcome is understanding which model brings the highest predictive performance for uh, predicting the hotel reviews. It could be SVN, Raw Network, or other algorithm, or decision tree. So again, please submit it by tonight. The prizes are great. I mean, they sent you uh, to Inform's conference next year, of uh, this, actually this year, I mean, November. Hopefully by that time we get rid of coronavirus, uh, which is totally feasible. I think by November or a, a late October, I mean we will be, we will uh, def most likely we get back to the normal life. At least what I hope for. And if you are uh, uh, looking for a good companies to get hired, many good companies are coming there. And um, like Apple, Intel, Walmart, Amazon, all of them do interviews there. Or if you're interested for PhD programs, you can, uh, all the professors from all the schools come there and you can talk to them, show your resume, and sometimes even uh, they post their PhD position. So I strongly recommend to get there. If you uh, get the prize for MSBA competition, you go there free. So everything would be paid. Any questions so far about the quiz that we had or like uh, MSPA competition or your final project do? 
I waited like one minute. So if you don't hesitate to ask your question if you have any. Otherwise, I'll go to the next slide. Okay, I didn't get any question from you guys. So for what we started last week and uh, looking at the next weeks, I mean, uh, basically we want to see uh, how to formalize uh, a, a problem into linear programming approach and how to solve those problems. So last week we look at the graphical Algorithm today we talk more about simplex and sensitive analysis and uh, how to do through how to solve a linear programming problem using Excel solver. Then, if you have time, we go to integer programming, network programming, goal programming, multi op, and at the end, multiple objective optimization. So Generally speaking, we are doing optimization because we have some decision variable and we have some constraints. And given the problem that we have, we want to maximize benefits or minimize loss. So I think we, we kind of, although we are saying that uh, the problem is maximization, but on the other hand, you can say it's a general optimization problem. So today we want to see how we formalize a linear programming problem into Excel sheets. What does binding constraint means? What is a slack surplus and shadow price means? And we look at some sample problems. One problem is the last week problem that we had for hash brown and sandwiches. And also we have two more problems, uh, basically application of linear programming in make versus buy and transportation problem. Basically today's class is mostly lab. So um, you would learn basically uh, first how to formalize, how to tell Excel uh, what is the problem and how to solve it. So I think we just talked about this, okay. So this is the last week problem. And if you might remember, if we solve it graphically, today we want to use Excel. So, so mm, let me find the problem and show it to you. I think I posted on model, this one. Well, let me read it again because we need, uh, I mean, I need you to think about that. A clock alumni owns a fast food restaurant named LP Clark. He plans to start a new family meal for uh, containing sandwiches and hash browns. He has to make a decision that how many sandwiches and hash browns to include in the meal, in the meal offer. So first of all, this is a decision making problem. And we, are, we want to see how many sandwiches hash brown to produce, so, or to make a frequency of sandwiches and hash browns are basically value of those decision variables. Basically sandwiches and hash browns are decision variable. Because we want to make a decision how many of them to produce or make. His objective is to design a meal with minimum cost. So, we want to optimize problem with minimizing the cost. However, there are few requirements of the plan. The first, basically this, uh, we look at this, uh, I mean, this requirements basically mostly about the coefficients of the uh, objective function and also our constraint. So the first requirement, the cost of one sandwich is $5. 
and one hash brown is one dollar. So we know uh, how our cost function works. Every sandwich fun five dollars, every hash brown one dollar. So you might say, um, if hash brown is that much cheap, let's just produce hash brown. Why do we bother ourselves to produce or to make sandwiches? They're five times more expensive. But if you look at the, um, basically, the below table about uh, what does a sandwich or hash brown contains, you can see um, sandwiches has much more protein, fat, and carbs. So for making the same amount of protein, you need to make four hash browns or two uh, or for fat you need to make two hash browns or for same carbohydrates on uh, almost each sandwich has, has two times more carbs than a hash brown maybe at the end we would say we just want to make hash browns because it satisfies other requirements and it's the cheapest, but maybe in some cases it doesn't work. So we look at the requirements and let's uh, mathematics or linear programming concept solve it for us. So other requirements, the meal should contain at least 1000 calories. Okay, so It means um, no matter of how many hash brown or sandwiches you, you make, at the end, that meal should have at least 1,000 calories. Same for uh, protein. We need at least 60 grams of protein. For fat, the concept is the opposite. We shouldn't have more than 80 grams of fat. And for carbs, it should ha have at least 100 grams of carbs. And this is just breakdown of uh, each sandwich and each hash browns. So now, I mean, you might remember, I hope you remember how we solved it last week through graphical uh, approach. In today's class, we want to solve it through Excel. So let me open an Excel file. Okay, just a moment. I hope you can see my monitor. So look at the uh, data tab. I click on data tab. Okay, I got an error from somewhere. So anyway, so on the right side of data tab, I have solver. You may or may not have it. It's very possible that you don't have it if you haven't used it in other classes. So I think I should disconnect my something here from here. So anyway, sorry, I had some technical issues. So if you don't have solver under, under your data tab, go to file, options. I just wait like one minute for you to just open an ex random Excel file and go to options, go to file. Again, I went to the file. Then up, I want to click on 
options. Hey guys, can you see an Excel file that I opened? Because I just joined and I don't see I don't see that. I'm just want, wondering if you can see. Do you see a PowerPoint or Excel file? Okay, I got the answer from you. PowerPoint, not Excel file. Oh, sorry. So I I, get, I hope so you told me sooner. So. Let me see what happened. New share screen. Okay, now you can see. So I just waited because I just logged into the Zoom with another account. Now uh, I saw that I don't see any problem. But anyway, let me explain again. So now I want to solve. Um, I want to uh, solve that uh, linear programming problem using Excel. I don't, because last week we did it uh, graphically. So having said that, um, if you click on Excel data tab of Excel, so first is in the file or home, I click on data, then on the right side of data tab, there is a solver. Solve is the tool that I use to solving a linear programming problem. You may or may not have it. If you don't, that's fine. So what should you do? You go to File, then click Options. Then Add-ins. Okay, just wait now a little bit so you can catch up with me. So here, select Excel add-ins. Then click on Go. And in the add-ins one, select Solver add-in, then click OK. Now you should see solver option on the right side. So is there anyone that wants me to explain again how to active, uh, active, activate the solver? Okay, hopefully all of you can understand because it seems no one has issue. Okay, now let's go back to the problem again. So the way that we do, um, basically first, uh, let's say H stands for hash brown, or let's say S stands for sandwiches, and H stands for hash brown. Uh, 
these are my decision variables. I give you the solution later, just see what I'm doing. No worries. I mean, I give you the, what I, this, I post the solution later. So, but just see what I'm doing. So then decision variables values. So I'm not sure how many sandwich and hash brown I want to produce. So let them just make them yellow for now because I know what, what are my decision variables, what, what does their values. So the next one is objective function. Or maybe just put coefficients of the objective function. I know each sandwiches cost five dollars, and each hash brown one dollar. These are coming from here. So I'm, I'm not sure how many, uh, what is the values of my decision variables, but I can write the formula. I can say whatever I have here, the value of uh, my objective function would be five times how many sandwiches plus $1 times how many hash browns. Let's make with the title of total. Right now, the total value is, oh, let me just change the color to something. This value is zero right now. Because uh, the decision variable cells are zero or empty. So it's the reason zero times five plus zero times one is zero. So now I go to the next step. What's that? So I have a limitation about basically upper constraint uh, that's saying that I need at least 1000 calories with some sandwiches and some hash browns. Each sandwiches has 300 calories and each hash browns 200 calories. So calories constraint or constraint one. So calories constraint. So each sandwiches that I produce or make has 300 calories and each hash brown 200 calories. And they should be less or equal 1,000 calories. Now, I want to see how many calories uh, here, he, how many calories uh, this would be produce or make using uh, our decision variables. I know. It should be 300 times number of sandwiches plus 200 times number of sandwiches. It should be zero now because I, I don't have any value for, I don't know what should be my number of sandwiches and number of hash browns. But let's say if you have two sandwiches, if he, here is two, you see it's now 600 because uh, we have 300 calories per sandwiches. So right now, the total amount of calories is zero, but we know that it should be at least 1,000 calories. So right now, this constant is not satisfied. 
So the next constraint is protein constraint and it should be at least 60 grams. So at least 60 grams here, protein constraint. Each sandwich has 20 and each hash browns five. So 20 here, five here. And same here, so 20 times number of sandwiches, five times number of hash browns. And we know right now it's zero, but should be at least 60. The next constraint is for fat. So for fat, it should be less than 88 grams. So fat constraint, which is 20 and 10. At most 80. And now we go to our last constraint, which is at least 100 grams of carbs. Let's see, 50, Okay, now I set up the problem. So what should we do? If we solve the yellow cells, if you find the quantity of our decision variables, in this blue cell, which is the object value of the objective function, we want to, we can see uh, the cost. And also here, instead of zero, you see the actual value. So you will see that uh how far you are to that uh, constant for example your uh, calorie should be more than 1000 so here instead of zero it should be at least 1000 instead of 60 at least 60 and 80 should be something less than 80 and so on and so forth so let me just make it blue too so at the end, we would, uh, after solving the problem, we would see the results, uh, or instead of zero there, we would see actual values. But right now there are zeros because uh, we, are, we, don't, we haven't solved the problem and our decision variables has just the value of zero. If I want to show it here, so objective function is minimizing five times S plus one times H. This is the objective function, is a minimizing problem. We want to minimize the cost. And the constraint are, let's see, constraints, 300 S. Oh, let me put 
multiple signs. So S plus 200 times hash browns less or equal, sorry, more or greater than 1000. Second, 20 times S sandwiches, five times hash brown, more or equal 60. Twenty times sandwiches plus ten times hash brown less or equal one thousand, and for carbs it should be also more than one hundred. So the right side is what we we saw in last week graphically. And uh, you might imagine it was pretty straightforward. So we just look at the edges. And checking all the points, we find what, what, which point makes it minimize the problem or in other example, how we maximize the problem. So basically le left side here, which I'm highlighting, for you now. There's no math behind of that. I just convert the format of the actual problem to the format that is understandable for Excel. So again, these two formats that I'm showing here, let's make this one red or orange. So the orange is the mathematical format, which we solve it through graphical approach last week, the left side is in the Excel format. This is how Excel can understand what we are talking about. And it's not done yet. I mean, we, in the next step, we let Excel, we give more information to Excel to solve it. So any questions so far? I give him two minutes to look at it. Then I, I give more. Inf I show you how to give more information to Excel and solve the problem. Okay, now, uh, you know, the Excel format, which is the left side, is not done yet. We need to give more information to Excel, otherwise Excel doesn't understand what we are doing. So next step, I give more information to Excel. I go to Data tab, then click over Solver. In the first cell, we, want, we should tell Excel where is the value, where should Excel put the value of object in function? This is under total. You would say, calculate the objective function here. In the next line, I need to say this is a maximize or minimizing problem. I say it's a minimizing, we are minimizing the cost. 
next cells ask you by changing variable cells here we need to show our decision variables which are these two so again first cell for showing the uh, where should excel find the objective function type of the problem which is minimization because we want to minimize the cost of meals and in the next cell i need to show where are my decision variables which are zero for now but excel would solve and change those yellow cells in the next part we need to identify our constraints i click on add First, I should need to show the calculation of that constraint, which is here, first line, first cell. Basically, based on the decision variable, you can understand uh, what could what would be the value of the calories constraint. And we know that it should be more than 1,000. So cell references uh, is the cell that has the uh, calculations of the first constraint which is here e8 it should be more than and constraint is 1000 so again first cell is the calculation of the constraint based on the decision variable the second one the type of constraint and the last one is the value of constraint I need to add one more. Second constraint calculations here. We know it's more than, and the constraint value is 60. Add. Third one is fat constraint. The calculations is in this cell, E10. We know it should, the I'm not sure what is so M on the screen. <laughs> so uh, it should be less than 80. So in the constraint value, click here, add, and the last constraint. So carbs, the cal formula of your calculations are here, is here. It should be more than. And the constant value is 100. So I click on here, then press OK. Look at here. Now I have all the constraints. Again, the left side shows the, uh, the cell that calculates the constraint value. In the middle, you see the either greater or less. And the right side, the constraint value. Look at this one saying they make uh, unconstrained variables non-negative. Basically, uh, we know we don't have any constraint here for a sandwich and hash browns. Definitely, you can add it here. But for decision, visually, we don't put uh, constraint for decision variables. Uh, and we just click here saying that uh, the unconstrained variables which here are s and h or decision variable are non-negative because it doesn't make sense to have negative sandwiches and hash browns so i click on it solving method we are talking about linear programming not grg non-linear select the simplex linear programming or simplex lp lps stands for linear programming So again, click on solve, or we can go to options and like, I mean, there's not that much of thing for this class, but you can play with iterate. If your problem is too big, you can work with the number of iterations or time that it might take to solve the problem. Here we just have two decision variables and four constraints. 
So the problem is pretty small. It even doesn't make sense to play with the number of iteration, but sometimes you have 1,000 uh, decision variables, like 2,000 constraints. So those are really big problems, and sometimes very hard to solve them. So you need to specify the maximum time to spend or iterations, but it's not the case for the smaller problems. So you don't have to play with the options that much. I click on solve. On the right side, I select answer, then click control and select sensitivity because we want to uh, talk about sensitivity of the results too. So then I click OK. Now, look at here, the, under total, we have 14, means the minimum objective function minimization of five times S plus one times H uh, is 14, because we end up saying, for, uh, make four hash browns and two sandwiches, two times five plus four times one is 14, and same for the constraints. For calories constraint, you if you make two sandwiches and four hash browns, we make 1,400 calories, which is more than 1,000. So first constraint is satisfied. Second constraint saying that protein should be more uh, greater or equal 60, which is now we have 60 grams of protein. So we satisfy this one too. Second one, the fat should be less or equal 80, which now is 80. So if you, if you make uh, four hash browns, four times 10 plus two times 20 here, so you end up making 80 grams of fat, which is less or equal 80. So that's, that is satisfied too, and same for the last. So we are making 220 grams of carbs, which is far greater than 100. So this blue uh, cell shows that this satisfies all the constraints. And by satisfying all of them, the optimal result is 14. So the minimum dollars that you need to spend for making such a meal is $14. So I give you one minute to look at it. And if you have any questions, I answer to you. Otherwise, I go to the next slide. Okay, Sonia has questions. Let's move to the questions. Can you please show us the solver parameters window? Again? Oh, sure. Okay, let me open the solver window. So the first one, first cell is E5, which is, I'm saying that here uh, is the cell that shows the, actually has the calculations of the objective function. If I click on, let me just close it again. If I click on 14, you see the formula. I said, formula on top here. I said, based on the yellow cells that you find, the value of the objective function, which is uh, five times sandwiches, because each sandwich is $5, one times hash brown. So, because at the end, based on the decision that you make about the number of hash browns and sandwiches, 
in terms to the dollar coefficients and at the end you can find what is the value. So let me open again. So, so in that, then we say the objective is minimization type of the objective function. In the third or in the second cell, I show the uh, location of my decision variable or, or these yellow cells. And in the last one, I, I just talk about the constraints. So the left side is how, how to calculate the constraints and type of in the middle you see is greater or equal for the type of the constraint and uh, on the right side you see the value of constraint oh, let me just put it here Basically, solver parameters and left side are actually this uh, orange rectangle. So orange rectangle is how a human can read the problem. The left side and solver parameters is how an Excel, uh, Excel can understand what you are talking about. So there's basically there's no mathematics behind of that. It's just how you can convert and mathematical linear programming problem to something that Excel can understand. So I hope I answered your question. Is there any other questions? Okay, if there's no question, let me just open the other Excel sheet. So we have a re answer report one and sensitivity report one. So you just see the objective cell is final value is 14, the minimum cost. You, a decision variables value S or sandwiches, we produce two sandwiches, four hash browns. And look at here. So we, we here we are talking about our constraints. So if you let me go back here. If you remember, looking at here. So basically. We fully, uh, I mean, basically the, the uh, co constant value is actually equal to the uh, cap that we had. So, for example, protein should be more uh, greater or more than 60. So we end up making 60 grams of protein. And for fat, our limitation was uh, less or equal 80 and we end up making 80 grams of fat so what if we had uh, basically we, let me just make it easier so we are binded the, to these two constraints because now our cow is much more than what we should do and also carb much more than what we need uh, to make but we are binded to these uh, constraints. Let's say instead of 60, what, was, what if we made 50? So the cap was 50. Or what if it was 70? Or same for 80 grams of fat. What if it was 60 or 100? So again, since we are binded to that two uh, constraint, we are talking, we are saying that there are binding uh, constraints because we satisfy right 
exactly right to the amount of those constraints, but we are not binded to the carbs and calories uh, constraint because we basically we fully satisfied. We are much more than that constraint that, we, and we are not limited to those constraints. It's just it looks like uh, if you play with those constraints, make it a little more or less. It's not that much changing anything. So in the, so what brings in your, it might bring some questions saying that we are binded to protein and fat constraints. What if instead of 80 grams of fat, the, uh, the limitation was uh, less than 70 or less than more than 85, what happens? The answer of those questions on the sensitivity reports. So look at the fat constraint. The shadow price is negative 0 0.05. What does it mean? If you, you change um, instead of eight, if your cap of that constraint, instead of 80 was 81, what happens to the objective function? As you see, if, if you change your fat constraint to, instead of 80 to 81, your, you drops, it drops your objective function by 0 0.05 dollars. What does it mean? Uh, this is the constraint that is affecting your objective function. If you make it easier, maybe maybe say instead of 80, make 81 grams of fat. So if you lose the constraint, you reduce your cost. Or here in the last one, you might remember that we exactly make 60 grams of protein. What if instead of 60, we said make at least 61? What happens? So if you make make it harder, if you want more nutrition, if you want more protein, it uh, based on each gram of extra protein, we need to pay 0.3 dollars. So again. Shadow prices are comes for are coming for the binding uh, constraint, the constraint that we exactly make to the amount of the constraint, like fat. And we want to see what happens if we either make it our constraint uh, harder for the problem, or basically uh, change the constraint, make it one unit more. What happens to the objective function? So it's not, it doesn't work for carbs or calories because if instead of 100, you make it 101, you already make 220. 101 doesn't have that, that any effect, any effects on carbs or you already made 1000 calories. What if instead of uh, saying make more than 1000 calories, what happens if you say, make more than 1,001 calories. You already make 1,400 calories. So changing the calories constraint and carbs constraint by one unit doesn't affect your objective function because you are far different from those constraints. But we are binded to the protein and fat because we exactly make to the amount of the constraint or right Let's say make it a new value. So the values that you see here, 1060, 80, and 100, we can say RHS or right-handed side, right-hand side. So the, as you see for the protein and fat constraint, then the values that you make for the amount of protein and fat is exactly equal to right-hand side value of the constraint. So for this one, we want to see what happens if instead of saying make uh, at least 60 grams, what if we say make at least 61 grams? So what if we say make 80 grams or 81 grams of constant? So we want to see what happens 
if we change the right hand side of the binding prop, uh, constraint by one unit. So you see those values. If you increase by one unit uh, of fat constraint, or if you make increase one unit to the right hand side of the fat constraint, you may you need to pay less, and for the protein you need to pay more. The next column is right hand side or RHS. So let me just put RHS here. So we already know what is our right value. The next two columns are allowable increase and allowable decrease. What does it mean? How, if assuming the other constraints are same, how much we can change? Uh, how much we can change the fat cons or right hand side? So uh, we can increase by forty or decrease by sixteen. So instead of saying that 80 grams of fat, you can change it to 120 or 16. And it doesn't affect other, it doesn't affect your objective function. For the carbs, you see that um, you can increase um, by 120 and decrease uh, indefinitely, and same for calories and protein. So, I give I uh, get back to this uh, sensitivity analysis later. I'll just give you like two. Or Let's say you have a three, four minutes to play with your Excel files on your system to feel more comfortable how to formalize an, a linear program problem to the Excel format problem. Then, uh, then please download um, the in-class problems file. So let me change this one to you can see this okay then please download this uh, word document after playing with the excel file and feel more comfortable so we 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 see some question uh, answers from for the sensitive analysis so i go to the questions and check the answers again so for now please just play with this excel file and feel comfortable about how to formalize it so in I get, then download from the uh, the word document from Moodle. So I give you five minutes to do this, and then I, I go to the next.
应该不是我卡了吧？还行，这个课本来有四十个人上，现在有二十六个人上。Okay, so let me just go to the, the, this Word document. So, question one: Which are binding constraint and non-binding constraint? So, we have seen that the value uh, for the protein and fat, the value of the constraint, the I mean the outcome of the constraint was exactly 60 and 80. So we almost, we actually bind it to 60 and 80, but for the uh, carb, carbs and calories, we are we made much more than 1,100. So we are not binded to those problem, to those uh, constant values. So, okay, so here I have that. Sensitivity analysis variables. So, so here I put some further information, but basically the constant having non-zero shadow will uh, will be binding uh, constraints. So if you look at here, for protein and fat, the shadow price is um, different from zero. So. They are binding constraint. Is there anyone who doesn't know uh, where is those where is this uh, word document? If you know, don't know, it's on the model. So second question: If the cost of sandwich increases from five to ten, will that change our optimal solution? So the allowable increase is almost unlimited. Allowable decrease is one. So you can change your value of your sandwich from four because decrease by one means change five to four. And you can increase as much as you, you want. At the end, um, you need to make two sandwiches and four hash browns. Again, what does allowable increase and decrease means? It means how, uh, what if you change the value of coefficients, how much you change the value of coefficient that it doesn't affect your final value. So again, you, instead of five, you can change it to four because this allowable decrease is one. And you can increase this um, basically mathematically uh, you can increase it as much as you can, but it, if you do such a thing, the number of sandwiches that you make is still two, but the price should be very different. So if I uh, change the number of uh, the value of the or price of sandwich instead of five, if it was three, the number of sandwiches is different. So basically, in the variable cells. The allowable decrease and increase is talking about the coefficient, how you change the coefficient that it doesn't affect the final value. So if I go to this question, Can we get the value of it? So if you change uh, from five to 10, is it still under the allowable increase? So you still need to make two sandwiches and four hash browns. So what if it, instead of 
five, the price of sandwich was three. So three is less than four because the analog dictionary is, is one, three is less than the, the allowable decrease. So what does it mean? After such a decrease, the final value is not two and four anymore. You need to uh, solve the problem again. Okay, again, let me just repeat again. So these sensitive uh, tables talking about allowable decrease and increase, basically how much you change your for the variable says how much you change the coefficient of uh, decision variable that doesn't affect your uh, the value of the or value of the decision variable. So, if I change five from four to unlimited value, I still need to make four sandwiches and four hash two sandwiches and four hash browns. But if you change it three, it's less than my allowable decrease. So it, what does it mean? The answer is totally different. So I need to redo or recalculate the problem. So next question, what is the shadow price for protein constraint? Explain it. So the shadow is the, uh, Price of protein is 0.3. The right hand side of the protein constant is 60. Shadow price of 0.3 means if a unit increase in, uh, is made in the right hand side of the constant, keeping everything else constant, the change in the objective value would be 0.3. So if you increase the right hand side of a protein constraint from 60 to 61, you need to pay 0.3 dollars more. Oh, but again, so the final answer instead of 14 would be 14.3. So let me go to the next one. Okay, oh, I just forgot to say. So again, that constraint, let me go back here. I think I forgot to say previously. So right-hand side of the constraint is um, 60, and we have 20 allowable increase and decrease. What does it mean? If it's in right hand side of your problems, instead of having saying that you should make more than 60 grams of protein, if you change it from, if you minus 20, which is allowable decrease, or plus 20, allowable increase, so that you can't change your protein from 40 to 80. And by each unit, if you increase by one unit, you need to pay 0.3. If you decrease by one unit, so you should pay less, point, uh, $0.3 dollars less. So basically, you're, you can play with the uh, protein constant from 40 to 80. Its affect is linear and by 0.3 to the objective function. So Instead of 40, if I, if I say the right-hand side of protein is 59, so one unit decrease, is it still under allowable decrease? So it changed my objective function from 14 to 13.7. So such a coefficient is applicable within this range and same for the fat so if you increase your fat constraint to 81 you need to pay 13.95 because it by changing one unit it decreases your objective function by minus 0 0.05 dollars and this shadow price 
is applicable between 80 plus 40 or 80 minus 16? Which is the answer here. So question five, what if right-hand side of the carbohydrates constant change to 300? So carbs, so right now, the right-hand side, uh, shell price is zero anyway. So, we, and zero is applicable uh, by, by 100 plus 20 with the range of 100 plus 120 and 100 minus any number so it could be negative numbers too but basically this is the range so the range of so the shadow price of zero is applicable anywhere between 220 and less because 100 plus 120 is 220 so now it said what if we change the right hand side to 300 what happens 300 is not within the allowable range so you need to resolve the problem again let me review what we had so far so so far we find the value of decision variables and objective function and now in the sensitivity analysis we want to see what happens if we change coefficient of objective function here. What is the allowable range and how does it affect our objective function? And for the constraint, we have shadow price saying that what happens if we change our right hand side, uh, constant right hand side by one unit, either it doesn't change anything or add or minus something. And Then we also want to see the allowable range for our shadow price. If we change right hand side to something that is within the allowable decrease or increase, we, these shadow prices are valid. Otherwise, we need to re resolve the problem. We, you need to again uh, formalize through Excel and find the final answer. I just wait one minute if you have any questions, otherwise I go to the next part. Uh, I think I have a question. Okay, read, let me read the question. Could you explain more about the status and... Okay, okay. I think, yes, that's a good question. I think... So let me review some terms with you. Is that your one of your friend's question? Uh, his question, or oh, I forgot the, the name, but the question was about sur surplus and slack. So what is surplus? The amount by which the left-hand side of the greater than equal constraint exceeds the right-hand side. 
actually this is just a definition not a, like mathematic thing so let's look at our example so in the greater or equal so the look at the constraint uh, we said 300 times sandwich because each sandwich has 300 calories and each hash brown has 200 calories it should be more or greater than 1000 okay so now since we made four hash browns and two sandwiches two times 300 plus four times 200 the total amount of calories that we made is 1400 slack uh, surplus means in such a constraint that we have greater than or equal how much you are how much you exceed the right hand side so since we are 1400 our surplus is 400 we surpass the greater or equal constraint by 400 in the value also we have another term slack the amount by which left hand side of the less than or equal constraint uh, lacks its right hand side very similar to this the previous one so our fat should be less or equal 80. since we made four hash browns and two sandwiches the total amount of fat is 80 grams and it's exactly equal 80. So the differences uh, from what we made and what is the constant is zero. So here, slack is zero. But if instead of 80, here we had 70, the differences between 70 and 80 is 10. So slack would be 10, but it's not the case here. But good question, thanks for asking. So I think I posted in the Moodle, this like the definition of the uh, slash surplus, binding constraints and shadow prices. So is, I just wait one more minute. So if you have any question I explain, otherwise I'll go to the next part. Sorry for keep you waiting because you know this is like an online class, so I cannot. I need if you have any question, you you cannot raise your hand. So the only way you can text me or like whatever is saying your question, so I can explain. Otherwise, I know it looks weird, but sometimes I have to wait. Okay. Okay, let's look at this problem. By the way, um, oh, just before that. So the way that we solve the problem is through linear programming and the algorithm is simplex. So basically, Excel, you, we already told Excel to solve it through simplex algorithm, which actually you don't have to know, but let me just read it again. I went to the solver and the selecting solving method, I said simplex LP. So under the hood, Excel used some formulas and uh, equations of simplex to find your answer. So teaching simple is out of the content for now. If we ha I have time, I go to that and I teach you how to do, how to, I mean, solve a problem using simplex. But it's nothing just trying to find the edges on the, uh, on, on your region and finding the one that maximizes or minimizes your objective function. 
but and again if i have time I, I teach you how to do simplex so you can understand what is under hood of linear programming but for now just keep in mind how excel solve a linear programming problem So let's and but again, I mean the best way of learning linear program is just uh, hands-on experiences because you know even right now I'm showing you some uh, readings. So so you see a write-ups. You need to, uh, to have so many experiences to understand how to make change a write-ups to a uh, uh, linear programming equations. Okay, let's look at this problem. A company titled Booster Balls produces three kinds of footballs, ball one, ball two, ball three. Due to increasing the demand, the production at own facility is not enough for this month. This month, a total of 3,000 bags of ball one, 2,000 bags of ball two, and 800 bags of ball three are required. And you see that uh, on the left table, if you make them, if you make ball, ball one, you need to spend $52. If you buy it, if the cost will be 61 and like 83.97 for ball two and 130 and 145 for ball three. And what does our constraint? So the first constraint is, uh, we know that we should make 4,000 uh, bags of football should be produced in house. At least we should at least make 4,000 bags of balls in house. At max, 1,000 bags can be ordered from outside. So you can play with the number. So the outside order should be anything less than 1,000. And production should be at least 4,000. These concerns are given, and I mean, might be some political issues or like marketing thing, uh, strategy. And we have 10,000 hours of labor available. So, and we know if we want to make a ball, ball one, we need to spend two hours of labor for ball two, one hour for ball three, three hours. And the, the budget that we can pay for our labor is like, uh, is 35K and also per bag ball one labor costs five, $7. For ball two is $8 and for ball three is $7. So I give you like a few minutes to talk about this problem and just imagine how we can solve it.
professor? Yes. Uh, the aim is to decide whether to make or buy uh, with the required budget, which is given, right, with the constraints. So, so we need to compare. Or, yeah. Basically, you know, uh, look at the left table. Mm -hmm. We just have cost. Right. So when you have cost, it makes sense to minimize the total cost. Right. So yeah. So so that's what. So we need to compare the two costs. One, if we'll make them, if we'll buy them, and the one which is the minimum cost, we need to like that's the answer, right? Yes. Okay. I think I have two more questions. Let me see. Oh, I just saw you. Sorry, I just saw the take the chats. So having said that, so these are our decision uh, variables. How much, how many of like ball one we make, how, how many ball two and three makes, and how many we buy from for ball one, two, and three. So and we know the cost of each uh, decision variable. So let's say M1 refers to how many uh, ball you make in house, and we know each of them costs $52. Same for if you make uh, ball two, you should pay 83 per each. And for ball three, you should pay 130. If you buy ball one, you should pay 61, ball two, 97, and ball three, 145. So basically, this is my objective function. And I know since it's the cost function, so I should minimize it. Now let's talk about the constraints. Uh, Professor, can you go back to the earlier slide? Sure. Uh, yes, this one. So here we are saying that minimum cost is equal to both making the balls and buying the balls. Basically here we are saying, we, uh, you know, right now we are not sure what is M1, M2, M3, B1, B2, B3. It might be zero. Maybe I, then you would say, I want to make everything at house. Okay. Or maybe you would say, maybe make like, uh, maybe okay, 100. It's a permutation combination, like make make one ball or buy the other based on the uh, the minimum cost, right? Yes. Okay. Maybe, maybe, it doesn't mean all of them are zero. Or Let's say if you make, it doesn't mean you don't buy. Maybe you make some and buy some. Right, right. Got it. Yeah. Right now, we just formalize it. We, we are not sure what would be the values of like uh, M, M1 to 3 or B1 to B3. And maybe at the end, we don't, maybe for ball one, we make and buy some. For ball two, maybe we just make and for ball three, maybe we just buy. We are not sure what would be the, at the end. Uh, so basically, uh, we just let. Uh, Linear programming to simplest uh, algorithm solve it for us. So next slide is for constraints. So we know that um, how much balls should be made for how much bags of ball uh, should be made for each type of them. So for type one or ball one, we should make three thousand. So you see, M one plus B one is equal to three thousand. It's just saying that we are not sure how many one we make or buy, but at the end, that type should be equal to 3,000. For ball two, 2,000, and ball three, 800. So then we have some concept about our resources. We know that basically M stands for make. So M1 plus M2 plus M3, it should be more equal to 4,000. This is our policy, we want to make at least 4,000 bags at home. So, and B1 plus B2 plus B3, uh, we, we, we want to be sure we don't buy more than 1,000 bags. For 
for hours of labor so we know that um, we know how much each type of uh, making may I mean uh, might take so if you make bags of ball one it takes two hours so the coefficient of m1 is two coefficient of m2 is uh, one and coefficient of m3 is three because for for ball bags of ball three you need to spend three hours each but we know the cap is ten thousand I say for budget, so we know each bags of ball one, two, and three, how much they cost. And so the coefficient comes from the cost that we have for each thing, but we know that our budget is limited to 35K. And again, it doesn't make sense to have negative buy or make, all of them should be at least zero. So this should be more or equal zero. Actually, this is the most difficult part of the equation. I know you just you just have started working with extra solvent, so it might be a little challenging for you now. But after after like a like some samples, solving two extra solvent is easy. You need to just know how to convert um, Excel uh, this mathematic format to an Excel format. Then the rest is easy. But this is actually the hard part. part. The hard part is how to change some write-ups to mathematical equations. So next part is just solving it. So let me just take a snapshot from it. So let's make it bigger. As you see in the left side, I just uh, changed the format of a mathematical equation to uh, Excel equation. So let me just bring the objective function to. So at the end, these um, yellows are, let me just change the color to yellow. These are the decision value, but these are M, value of M1, M2, M3, B1, B2, B3. Uh, we want to solve, first of all, what could be our objective function? Uh, what would be the value of each constraint? how to Excel solve it. Again, I go to data. So then go to the solver. So the first cell is my objective function cell, which is I5. Then, then I need to say this is a minim minimization because we want to minimize the cost. Again, here I specify where is my yellow cells or decision variables. And also I said um, which one is more or uh, greater than equal constraint or less or equal constraint. On the left side, you need to put the cell that you calculate the constraint value, less or equal, less or more. Then on the right side, you put the uh, constraint capacity or uh, base, the cap. So 
and we know that we should all of them should be less or uh, greater than or equal to zero so here i said make unconcentrated variables non-negative so these are variables and they are not unconstrained they are not constrained so i just made all of them non-negative the, then i said solve through simplex linear programming or simplex then i hit solve click uh, answer then control click sensitivity and press ok oh. So, so this is it would be our minimum cost and also you see that we have some binding constraint like this too this one is is not binded again this one is binded unbinded and binded Binding cancer, we have like most of our cancer are binding. So let me go to sensitivity. Again, you can see allowable decrease and increase in um, value of uh, objective function. And you see that uh, like most of our constraints are binding and we have shadow prices for the binding constraint and allowable decrease and increase so saying that how much we change our right the right hand side of objective function sorry the how much or how, uh, how much we change the right hand side of the constraints without changing the objective function so how much we are allowable and uh, what would be the associated shadow price so if i let's say uh 35k i can increase by 35 600 or decrease to 34 600 anyway within that range the shadow price is negative five what does it mean if i increase by one it my shadow price decreases sorry the objective function decreases and if i decrease right hand side it actually add five more add five to the objective function basically the binding constant you can understand how, uh, what would be the shadow price of objective function or final answer and in which range that shadow price is uh, applicable and how we can change the coefficient of cons coefficient of objective function without changing the value of the objective function uh, also look at this uh, b3 this is zero basically you don't buy anything from bulk type three and the value of zero is anywhere between you can change it to unlimited and decrease by six so if i change my the coefficient of uh, b3 from 145 to 100 is for sure less than allowable decrease so i need to, uh, my answers are different so i need to redo the problem Or so I give you a few minutes to look at that. Then I uh, then if there's if there's no question, I'll, I'll go to the next part.
I have a question. Can you say more about the relationship between finite value and objective coefficients? Okay, one of you, you asked me a question, uh, what's the relationship between final value and objective coefficient? Basically, um, um, let's say for, for the last problem, we want to minim, uh, find the minimized cost. So if we want to minimize the cost, um, how we can calculate the cost? It's basically coefficient of the uh, decision variable times its actual value. When we start to solving, we don't know what is the actual value or final values. These are final values. So let me just turn them to yellow. We, we don't know what are they. Look at this one. Let me change it to green. These are coefficient of um, decision variables, which are here. How we calculate the object, this value is just 52 times 2600, 80 plus 83 times 1400 plus 130 times 800 and plus 61 times 400 and same up to 145 plus 145 times zero, which is zero. So this is how we calculate the objective function. Basically, minimizing this value, value would be equal uh, 438k. If we have one more question. Oh, one of your friends is a really good question. He said, in this question, the cost of labor do not calculate the cost of making the ball. Um, if I, let's look at the problem again. Okay. Actually, we don't see any direct relationship between labor cost. Um, let's see. So for ball one, it costs seven dollars for the labor yeah you're right i mean there's not that much direct relationship between labor cost and the making cost but you know we, we should see more information which is not provided here but this is a simplified problem yeah i got your question So your first question is that make ball for making ball uh, 
each bag is 52, but the 52 has some association with the uh, like seven dollar here. Yes, right, but you know we just don't go that to that much of details. Okay, the last problem is the transportation problem, which is very common, so uh, especially for uh, supply chain management. So you have some supply and some demand, and you need to transfer your products from origins to destinations, but the transportation cost differs based on the distance from origins and destinations. Uh, let's look at this problem. So we have three suppliers and the amount of supplies that we have in Mount Dora is 27K, in Ostas 400K and in Claremont 300K. We need to transfer goods to three processing plants of Ocala, Orlando and Leesburg. So and we know if we send from Mount Dora to the Ocala and the distance is 21 mile from like Dora to Orlando is 50 and like to Leesburg is 40 and same for the other. So we want to see how we send, uh, how we fulfill the uh, demand of processing plan and, with, and minimizing the transportation cost. So basically decision variables is the amount of products that we sent to in each link. As you see, we have nine links, three fr from Mandora, three from Ostas, and three from Claremont. So at the end, we have nine decision variables, which refers to amount of product that we send from each link. So you see all of those nine decision variables here. And again, in the transportation problem, we want to minimize uh, the cost here. Cost could be just very dependent on the, how much miles you travel. So basically you can just put the distance because like uh, the cost would be distance times the how much you consume per mile. So, that two problems, that two things are equivalent. So we know that um, the capacity of the processing plant in Ocala, Orlando, and Lisbeth, we know that as you see how much capacity they have. So the amount of the uh, products that they receive should be less than their capacity. Otherwise, they cannot process. So you see the internal links. I mean, the incoming links, the value of incoming links to each processing plant. And you also know how much supply to, you have. So in each supply origins, how much of products you have. And we know that all of them should be greater or equal to zero. We don't, we don't have any negative quantity. So as you see, it's not that much of, the rest is quite similar to other linear programming problems. The only difference is about how you formulate 
origin and destination. Again, transportation problem is minimization problem. You just have links and now you need to play with the, your supply, with the links and with the uh, destinations. First of all, we want to minimize the amount that we travel from each link. So the summation should be minimized we should satisfy our capacity based on the supply that we have. So transportation problem is in the last one. Look back and just look, have an overview. It's, very, it's not that much of different from other problems except for you play with the links and you try to minimize how much your goods, how much goods you, you, you need to distribute or how to minimize the cost while you are satisfying everything. So the rest is just entering them in Excel, which I did it here. I have concept related to destinations, supplies, and I have my objective function. So the yellow cells is amount of goods that we can send from, uh, that we send from our origins. The blue ones, the first one is my objective function. And the next blue ones is just saying, uh, is the calculation of the, the I mean, the constant calculations. We want to see if we have surplus or slack. The rest is pretty easy. You go to the data solver. You need to show the location of objective function calculations, the decision variables location, and also you need to plug your constraints and tell that all of them are non negative and solve. I click answer and sensitivity, okay. So this would be my answer. So so the, the minimization travel times um, Basically, the the, mean, the answer the 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 objective function answers to two million fifty five k. You can see in which concept we have surplus, slack, or we have binding or, or non-binding uh, constraint. I think I have a question. Your friend said J nine is right, so let's see. J nine okay let me see one six j nine is so j nine is about Lisbury constraint so all of the coefficients are one one six two six thirty six one six two six. Oh yes, your friend is right. So it should be one should be here. Thank you. So let me just calculate. Okay, let me calculate again. Thanks. It was just a typo. So let's see if I can do it again. Oh, it didn't go through. Thank you very much. Who said that? Oh, Taurus Lee. Thank you very much. So I go to solver again because I had, I put one of the uh, coefficient in the right place. So it should be, one should be here.
five. Okay, now we have a different answer. Thank you very much. Again, if you go to sensitive analysis, you can see, I hope I've made it right. So you can see your uh, which constant are biting. So as you see, some of the values are zero. It means if you don't send any product in those links, for example, uh, X, we don't say anything from origin two to destination four. So it's the reason the associated value is zero, the final value. So having said that, um, Concern one, two, three, four are binding. The fifth is not binding. And the last one is binding too, because the constant calculation is exactly equal to the constant cap. So just wait like a few minutes to see if you have any questions, otherwise, I think we are done with today, but I'm waiting to see if you have any questions. By the way, your quizzes are graded by uh, Monique. Monique is our TA. So I told him to post the quiz grade and after he's going to grade your assignments, hopefully soon. So hopefully from this week, uh, this, you see the grades uh, posted very fast. And next year, I appreciate if you apply for TA position sooner. So we, we could have a TA sooner. So you see the grades much faster, but thanks for Monique. At least from now, we see our grades, assignment, and quizzes much more faster. It seems there's no question. So thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions, you can just reach me and Monique. And um, you can, uh, uh, there's one question. Good. So what's the question? No, no, I can just make, I just, I just want to see if you were free tomorrow for, um, I want to ask you some things about the uh, project. So uh yeah please uh, if it's for personal thing please text, text me over group me yes i'm okay. available tomorrow so oh. yeah okay thank you yeah. so um yes that's it so if you have any questions like what one of your friends said now you can just reach us through group your emails and we set up a meeting and look over your questions hopefully we can solve it again you have like almost three three hours to submit your uh, project abstract for the MSBA co uh, competition. Please do that. So we have a, the competition would, would be much more uh, funnier than what's right now. There's not that much of competitors, but anyway, it's your choice. Thank you very much and have a great evening. So stop sharing. I think one of you asked a question, so I go to that question.